On this installment of Creative Cabin Fever, I meet Myth. So Myth just released a new song last Friday and they released the video yesterday. It's incredible. I can't wait for everybody who hasn't heard it yet to go and play it after this interview. Or if you've already heard it and that's why you're watching the interview, you are smart. Good morning, guys. How are we? Good, good, good. good. Um, Feeling fresh enough, I suppose. Yeah, it's actually quite frosty, like definitely not the warmest day, but we kind of got away with the weather that was just so nice until these points where now it's actually freezing. Yeah. Yeah, it's dead cold. Yeah, I'm standing in work, just freezing with like a big ski jacket on and my gloves and the hat. <laughs> just standing, huddling over the heater, just gasping for warmth. <laughs> It's, just, it's not great. I think you need to talk to your union. I think, yeah, I think no. you need to go to the some heaters. Hot water bottles disguised under hoodies are kind of my trick in the house at the moment because I didn't have oil for a while. So it's like hot water bottles under my hoodies going, oh God. My heating went oh, last yeah. night and I had to do that. Um, it, like, it, just, it just decided to not turn on and then a bunch of lights came on the boiler and I was like, oh. So then I just kind of went to bed cold with the hot water. <laughs> but it was working this morning and now it won't turn off. So I guess <laughs> something's working. Well, you know, <laughs> you want it on, so that's good. Yeah, I wanted it on. I mean, I can't complain. Yeah, you got what you wanted. <laughs> so guys, how's your experience with lockdown and releasing in lockdown been? So obviously it's a very challenging time and everyone's kind of feeling it differently. What's been your personal experience, Tiernan? Um, like just for releases, it's not it's not been too bad. Like because all of the it's kind of like the same uh, like routine that you go through for for releases, at least like on my end anyway. Because I'm kind of more uh, like in charge of the admin stuff. But uh, so like that part hasn't changed too much. Um, I, the only thing that's like different is like we usually like tie it in with like either like kind of like a string of gigs or like a headline show so now that we don't have that it's it like even like when the release comes out you're still anticipating like when you're going to play but now it's not happening so it's a bit shit <laughs> just a bit yeah and yourself gavin um yeah i suppose it's been it's not the worst i suppose it's been kind of checkered i guess because a few different lockdowns I remember during the summer last year, it was kind of, I was on the COVID payment, so I had lots of time, so I was writing lots of stuff, and and that was good. Um, haven't really been writing that much, because I moved out, and then started a new job, so the last two lockdowns have been kind of just been busier and busier. Uh, so I haven't really been able to do much on the writing front. But yeah, I suppose the band is kind of functioning as best it can at the moment. Mm. So I'm not too kind of bummed out about it. Like we're kind of hitting all our bases that we can. It sucks not seeing anybody. Yeah, no, that's definitely super challenging for everyone. I think just the, the the change of everything and how different things are. Like it's just, yes, we're releasing music and it's still getting the attention we want, but it's in such a different format. So even smart things like putting the video out a week later so that you're getting the double the kind of whammy of a release. That's mm. You know, just little tricks like that that are helping everyone kind of stay relevant and still get attention, which is wonderful. Yeah, I, I think we kind of the first, I think when we released 145 in the summer, it was kind of like a a test run for oh no, wait, sorry, no, so we released an EP in like May and then then it that it like it did okay. Like it wasn't like it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't like it didn't perform as well as we wanted it to. Um so then, like, when we had the release for 145, uh, like, and it was in, like, kind of the post, like, lockdown stage, <laughs> uh, we we had a bunch of, like, kind of different, um, like, ideas on how to how to make it grow the best I could. So, like, that's when we kind of started, like, looking at uh, tying in, like, video releases with the release. Because, like, we weren't, it's not that, like, we didn't want to shoot videos. It was just always, uh, I think it was always hard to kind of try and get time to do it but then you know like what else are you going to do in the lockdown so um it's it's been it's like we figured out a lot more uh through it so it's, it's been good for, for that point but yeah like Adam said it's just 
it's weird like because it's always such a big team effort and now like your everyone's just kind of like when the release does go or like when it's like like a lunch day everyone's like by themselves and it's just you know you kind of miss being with the with the band for like for those aspects of it yeah no agreed and obviously like gavin it's a shame that well, it's not a shame, but like it's it's a shame that you're working from the point of view that you're not able to use your creative juices as much as you were in the first lockdown. That's all I mean. So it's brilliant that you're working. Well done. But like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> creativity wise, but like a question I often ask is, did you find any changes to your creative process during lockdown? So because you were writing so much, was there anything that you noticed as a, a real difference to how you'd normally approach song creation or something? Um. Regarding myth, not so much. I kind of just would write like a few demos and whatever, and then I'd kind of bring them to the band and kind of show them the riffs and stuff and kind of go through it and maybe play the track or whatever. But then we'd, it would all be taken apart and we'd just make something new anyway. So, so uh, the thing I make usually ends up being completely different anyway. So at the moment, it's just stuck at the demo process and we can't really go any further with it. So uh, nothing's really changed in that way. Uh, I've started writing a lot of other things, like selling like production music online and stuff. So like that's been fun, but I suppose I've just been doing a few more kind of other bits. Uh, so yeah. Oh, I've started learning loads about mixing and all about how to do all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, I bought a few, Ooh, bought some more equipment. Fancy. Yeah, I got my big fancy desk now and I got a keyboard and lots of other equipment like that. Uh, so yeah, I have more stuff, but my, uh, the process hasn't changed. And you, you rewrote um, the soundtrack to Skyrim. Oh yeah, I did a well. lo-fi. I did a lo-fi remix of um, the uh, Obli the Oblivion, the Elder Scrolls. Sorry, Oblivion. Oblivion. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> James probably know it actually. Uh, yeah, that's been doing well actually. That was a bit of crack. Mm. Uh, it's great to see people being so creative and kind of upskilling. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's all about. Like what you make of this time, not so much dwelling on what you can do, but actually concentrating on the can. So things like that are just fascinating to me. That's great. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. Uh, I know once uh, once the world starts spinning again and we can start practicing and stuff, we probably won't be able to do that stuff as much. But at least then we can finally push ahead with all that myth stuff because there's a big backlog of material that we need to get cracking on. Yeah, which a lot of people are finding very frustrating because it's like you have all these babies created and you just want to kind of birth them, but you can't. And then you can't really move past that. And then you get to a point where you've just actually created such a backlog that you're like, which of my babies do I like better than the others? And then it's yeah. kind of like picking a favorite. Yeah, it's like, oh, I suppose I'll just start from the beginning and go from there. It's like, oh, I want to do that song. That one's great. Oh, it's just, it's going to take so long to yep. do everything. We had... Like in the, after the first lockdown, when me and Gav met up, we had 14 new tracks. Um, yeah, no, um, before the lockdown. Sorry, it was before lockdown. So basically like when we write, uh, like obviously everyone's included, but those days are kind of, I don't know, I think me and Gav are a little weird to work with. So not everyone shows up for those days. <laughs> But uh, we we punished them by writing more songs. So like it started off, we had like I think four, and then people kept like missing writing sessions. So then the next time they show, and like if I say kept missing, they missed like I think maybe two or three. Um, they they <laughs> came in, <laughs> we had like ten, and we we're like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah, what you get for not coming to practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we were quick sometimes, and then sometimes we yeah, were, like, that was so stupid. Like we just like, no, there was there was yeah. a. It was a whole day where it was just, I think we wrote like, I think eight in one day um, and we were absolutely exhausted going home. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was it was really funny at the next week at rehearsals because then you're just handing people songs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I remember around that time we were kind of changing our approach kind of um, because a lot of our songs are all kind of not quite sad, but they're all kind of down and kind of gloomy. Uh, yeah. And we were kind of like, we need some more party songs to like, yeah bop to dance to it's more just like yeah rock song so yeah. we and we'd never really gone down that road road no it so turns roughly. out we're super fucking efficient at doing yeah that. <laughs> yeah it turns out we've been writing music that's really hard to write for ages and yeah. start writing yeah. this other stuff and it's just song after song after song yeah just bop them out 
Yeah. But then I think uh, after, I think we got through the first four or five of them with the band. And generally, like, so, like, when me and Gav write them, it's then when they're brought in, they're completely destroyed. So Gav will bring it to me, then I'll ruin it, and then we'll be kind of happy with it. And then we'll go to the band, and then they'll take it apart again. So it's really deconstructive, but yeah, it works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So I'd, I'd like if sometime we could do an album where it's all of the original songs, and then it's all <laughs> of the other uh, decomposed <laughs> versions of the songs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that could just be the A and the B sides. One is the one that we wanted, and then yeah, the other is one that I want. I think Gary do it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You fun. know, at least you have a process that works for you. So that's really interesting. And yeah, it could be fun to actually juggle that around and see where you land. You never know, just by changing one thing up, you could end up with like a song that's so completely different to your usual process, but then like kind of resonates with other people. Like it's so interesting, like, you know, just to try different things. On on that tone, like I am always really interested on pe how people found their voice or their craft. So what was it that got you into doing music? How did that start, that journey for you? Sure, you can I, start. Yeah, uh, I don't... So, like, I started when I was, I think, five on violin. Um, and I don't know, it just, it just kind of clicked. So I kept going with that. And then I think by the time I maybe hit eight or nine, my brother handed me Appetite for Destruction. <laughs> and I was like, oh, music. <laughs> Not that like, uh, like traditional Irish violin isn't, um, and like I, I was good at it. Like it was, it wasn't like a, uh, like a part-time thing. Like I was fully committed to it, but yeah, no, as soon as I heard like actual, like proper, like rock proper music. Ripping time, guitars and bangs in the little world. Yeah. So then, yeah, then then I pressured my parents into buying me a drum kit and they did that because they're very nice. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say professionally it didn't start. I like I was kind of like like learning, but not like really like thinking of doing it like as a career. And then my cousin was on. She was like a backing singer for a Celtic Woman. And I they like she invited me over to like see them on tour and stuff. She probably realized uh, like I was probably gonna end up on the streets. <laughs> so uh so I went over there and I saw that and I was totally blown away by like the production and uh just like like how like professional musicians live and I was like, okay, fuck it. I was like, yeah, that's I was like, I'm not really great at anything else, so let's do this. Um and yeah, then then I just kinda applied to BIM and met Gav and that's that's pretty much it from there. <laughs> it's been it's it's been like working to try and be a professional standard since I'd say 16 anyway. I suppose my journey, where did I start? Uh, like, uh, yeah, I, th I think I started guitar when I was like 11 or something. Uh, just playing like all Metallica and Iron Maiden stuff. I remember the first thing the first thing I learned on the acoustic that I was like yeah this is sweet was uh, Tears Don't Fall by Bullet From My Valentine Ooh, yeah that is uh, I was like oh yeah this is great uh, yeah and then I just started doing all the classics and trying to like shred and be like yeah cool let me go learning loads of trivium and stuff um, and I think by the time I got to maybe third year in school um, I was like really in it and I kind of just I never really thought about it, but I kind of just knew music was going to be the thing I would be doing for the rest of my life because uh, it was like, it was my thing. Uh, yeah, so then it was no question about going to college, you know, it was like, go do music somewhere and BIM just made sense. I wanted to go to Trinity, but I didn't get it, uh, the points for that. So I uh, went to BIM, met Tiernan. Uh, yeah, then we started off Myth in 2013. So yeah. that was, but you... Yeah, that was like Myth. That was the first version of Myth. And then the second version of Myth is the one that makes more sense now. Yeah. Well, I think we, when we started, it was like me and Gav were like hired hands. Like we weren't fully in it. Um, we just show up. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Like go um, home. Like we weren't, yeah, we weren't part of it. Um, I don't even think, I don't even think we ever got asked to be in it. We just stuck around. <laughs> yeah, like I never, I, I, just kind of, I just kind of assumed like I'm in it. If he says like I'm not in it, then he's lying because I'm in it. Like, <laughs> like come on. Uh, but yeah. 
Yeah, and then we kind of, uh, he left, and then the band was kind of in no man's land for a bit, and then we kind of came back together, and I think after that, the sound really changed. We, it did. And yeah, we kind of stopped doing the pop punk thing, we started getting more into the moody stuff, I suppose. Yeah, angry. <laughs> yeah, I suppose um, he was the main songwriter then, and then I suppose it was me doing all the guitar you said the stuff, so. So it's you, I'm you're battered. the reason why our music is so sad. Yeah. <laughs> <Your> <laughs> soul. Mm, yeah, and cheers. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. like, I'm a really happy person, but I tend to gravitate towards sad, angry music because I think it's how I get mm. my frustration out. Like, you'd see me in a pit, like, I take on mm. anyone. Like, I'm a <laughs> force. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like... And I could go around just being like, I remember I was at Slipknot there January last and I was wearing a 1950s donut dress in the middle of the <laughs> Sweet. I was the Sweet. only colourful thing there, like, and I was <laughs> taking men on. <laughs> Sweet, rock and roll. <laughs> but yeah, so I think sad, depressing music actually has quite the different effect on me. And I imagine lots of people feel that way. It's how you get your emotions out. Like my my four year old, when he was younger, he like couldn't really express his emotions. So I put weight and bleed on and I'd let him have like a little mosh to get all the anger. And then he'd be calm again. <laughs> that's a good. That's very top. good. That's a that's a top tip. Mm, yeah, cool. I've never thought of that. Yeah, yeah that's right. cool. That's interesting. So does he like Slipknot? He does. His favorite bands are actually all from Australia because he has this really weird obsession with Australia. So he loves the chats and Amel and the sniffers. Mm -hmm. On the Irish scene, he loves Thumper and wants to be their third mm -hmm. drummer. But he nice, really yeah. loves New Secret Weapon more than anything. And that probably is because New Secret Weapon are my favorite Irish band of all time. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. I think their bassist was in my year. Mark, I think his name is. He was in my year in college. He's a really nice dude, though. Super bassist as well. But they, they totally took off in, I think, when I was in, like, second year. And then I kind of stopped seeing Mark so much in college. <laughs> well, they're actually doing yeah, a, a live stream from the Button Factory on the 1st of February. Oh, are they? Oh, good, good. Good for them. Amazing. That's, great. That's really cool. Yeah, it's one of the hot press lives. I'm really excited to see that whenever it comes out because I haven't seen them play in so long. Like, but that's that super cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, I wonder. I wonder how they're gonna do it. I want to see that. I wonder what way yeah, they're so, gonna dress, dress the stage and stuff. Yeah, it's really <laughs> exciting. I've watched four of the hot press lives because I, I I like to watch the other live streams that are going on because I'm also a live stream coordinator and uh, yeah. it's really interesting. Like, so you've got like the Vernon Jane one is filmography perfection like they just go in on Emily Jane and it's just filmed incredibly well like I was so envious of that one the lethal dialect one as well is done in his genre it's perfect uh then they had a uh, blackbird and crow that's on a couch so you just have the two of them doing what they do best and being powerful forces it's just so far they've really been pushing the boat and the envelope on that like so I cannot wait to see new secret up and do what they do that's cool. super cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah the last like we... and Jane were my year, actually. Were they? Mm. Ah. Them, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, such... Yeah, sorry, behind them, so. mm. They're such an interesting band. Like, the music they make is so different. Like, it's like Hiatus Coyote meets, like, Jazz Fusion with super angry skunk and antsy vibes in there. Like, it's just so even hard to describe. Like, that was not even doing it justice. And yeah, like, it's cool. So, it's so creative. There's so much, con there's so much substance to it. It's good. Yeah, the last gig I actually got to saw see live not saw live was Vernon and jane when they did the, um the whole album in one go before lockdown so that was back in march and it was just mind-blowing to see them there as an 11 piece like it was just like what is this start to finish <laughs> album that's sweet that's cool <laughs> yeah it was incredible really cool. mm. so since we've just managed to fall under rebecca's memories of gigs <laughs> Guys, could you want to talk to me about some of your gig experiences just to remember like what live music was like? Hmm. Uh, the last one we did was uh, in the Wild Duck, was it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, that's in the January. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I had to. <laughs> so that gig, I didn't enjoy. It was like the set went really well. It was really fun. Uh, we got some free drink, and but like I had, uh, like my root canal, I got done oh, like yeah. when I was like sixteen. I about that. But they they capped it wrong. So since I was sixteen, it's just been melting in my mouth. And it got to that point where uh, it was now like it, like my whole jaw was like on fire. So like pictures from that gig, like it looks like I'm having a stroke. Like one side of my face, I'm just like. <laughs> uh, yeah, you were in bits. I did not thing. enjoy it. <laughs> and then I got it. I got it ripped out the next day. I called the dentist in the morning. I was like, please. So, yeah. <laughs> I had a good time. <laughs> you had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I was still working in the Olympia at the time, and that's the pub that all the, all the Olympia guys would go to. So I kind of knew the mm-hmm. staff, and and a few of them came along after to have a quick look. So it was, yeah, that was nice. It was weird to play nice there after just it's like oh, it's like the work bar, but like to play there with the band was like oh, this is a weird connection yeah. of two two places. But yeah, that was good. I, I think. That will be like obviously the industry is like on its knees at the moment, but if it wasn't, I think that place would have like really took off. Like yeah, I probably yeah. still can. And like the promoter there, Barry, is really like really nice dude. But yeah, like, that was maybe like just, their second kind of the uh, original music night or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, they were just there and see like if if they could because I think they'd only had covers in and they were like really unsure like if like original music would pull a crowd and then like it was so like it was just a, it was just about to take off and uh that like we we're talking to the owner and he was showing us like how he was going to take out like the boots and stuff and make it a proper nice little venue and we we're like that is so cool and yeah then, yeah mm. then the world exploded yeah and then all of those plans went to shit so yeah yeah Such but a- you know what yeah. They were the first venue in Ireland to run socially distant gigs back this summer. So back in June, I believe they had the mm. first live gig in Ireland. That's yes. impressive. Like people That's who are brave cool. enough to do that. Like they did it mm, with yeah. Alexi from XO Promotions. And yeah, it was yeah, just. Yeah. So like, I imagine yeah, they're going to be mm. fine because they're brave enough. Like, Oh yeah, no, 100%. And like. Alex is he's a super promoter as well. So like yeah, he's very good. Yeah, he's good at it. he's he's been doing it long enough. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think I bumped into. I was meeting my friends for because takeaway pints were just starting at that point. I think, and I bumped into him when that gig was just going ahead, and he was like, "Will you come in?" And I was like, "Ah, I was like, I really, really want to, but I was like, I, I'm meeting someone for some takeaway." <laughs> I did not. We walked around. It feels so weird doing that in Ireland, like walking around with a big pint in your hand. It feels like it's <laughs> so wrong. Yeah, it feels a bit too European or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when knocker drinking was illegal? Yeah. <laughs> now oh, all of a yeah. sudden it's recommended. <laughs> yeah, now, now there's like government advice about it. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah, I remember getting some pints, but you had to have a cap on them and you mm-hmm. had to be like away from the the pub like 100 meters so stupid <laughs> none, of, none of this mattered <laughs> yeah like i remember just with, with my dad drinking guinness just the side of some road just away from the bar just in the freezing cold like just like what the hell is this <laughs> this is so weird yeah i think yeah. everyone feels that way everything is just so strange now like just even these yeah. little like conversations about how strange things are freaking fascinating <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, there's so many, there's so much to it. Yeah. I, you know, like I always imagine like in 10 years time, I look back on these interviews and be like, no, I don't remember it being that way, but it turns out it will happen. Mm, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was, yeah, that was kind of, that was definitely like the last gig that we'd done. Um, mm. In terms of venues, so I think, I think my favorite's probably Shine. It's just too small, but I love it. But I it don't is like the small. way there's nowhere to go after you play, like to put your gear. If yeah. it was like another room or something to put your gear in mm-hmm. and that you could like stand in and like yeah. take a breath. <laughs> That'd yeah. Be nice. It's full on. Like, I absolutely love that venue. We, we don't suit it at all. Like, we've, we've played there and we've sold it out, like, with our uh, own shows. Um, and like it's just we're so unbelievably heavy for that place like it doesn't it doesn't work at all i I think the last time we played there we were playing with a country band yeah 
And that it was, was like, wild. No, I don't no, know why no they picked one of those two parts it was, it was like that. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. I think uh, Gary used to live with Gary um, Neum. Yeah, that was lads, it. So. Yeah, yeah. So they were just like, yeah, come along, play. We'll drink loads of pints, you know. Yeah. Fuck it, it'll it's, be a weird gig. Yeah, let's do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. and the, the only the only <laughs> other problem with it is, no, sorry, and this is, it is my favorite venue, but like the drum kit, like nine times out of 10, it's, I'm sitting on the bar still, like below the kit. So I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like breaking my back. But uh, <laughs> other than that, it's the best. I love it. I love mm. it so much. <laughs> yeah, I like the way you can't uh, move. Uh, there with the guitar, hoping I don't hit Alex or anything, hoping I don't yeah, stand on all the lead, the pulling him here. Yeah, like... <laughs> uh, it was her really... fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. definitely her fault. Yeah. Mm. She gets hit in the head a lot. Like, I, Gary, she hit into <laughs> his... He, he was moving on stage, and she was headbanging, and she just cracked her fucking head into the into the bass. She um, needs a helmet. She does. <laughs> some, kind of, some kind of gigging helmet. Gig on it, yeah, yeah, that would, that would be perfect. Workman stage is really nice, like that's nice and deep. I think the Workman's one might be my favorite. That or the but like Button Factory would be the best, but I, it wasn't most, yeah, but like I mean, it's achievable. <laughs> that's you, that's good, yeah. But I think, I think, like, in, in like from gigging memories, I think the first show, like, so like when Myth like started back up, oh, there goes my clothes, um, me, it was like it was just me and Gav trying to see if we could do it on our, by ourselves. And that was the first time that we had sold out a show. So I think like, I think just even for like, in terms of like career progress, like I think that's why it's probably my favorite because it was like the first kind of sign that we like we could, uh, that we could do it. And uh, yeah, yeah. I like, I like it that, that, was, that was amazing. Just looking out. It's insane, like, like it was, like it was, it was actually back. And like, like you was, couldn't get to the bar. <laughs> yeah, and like, proper screaming, like it was deadly. It was just like, yeah. shit, oh, I feel like a super rock star right now. It's great. Yeah. And that was like the first time, first big thing. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was kick ass. Yeah, that was super. Um, so yeah, I like it for that reason. If they could get a proper drum still, I'd like it more. <laughs> it's funny. You should... your own tools. <laughs> it's funny you should mention the drum thing, right? Because it just reminded me of something that happened here in Waterford. There's this venue called Murphy's years ago, then it became the Metal Man, and I used to put gigs on in there like 10 years mm. ago. But there was a pool table, and there was one day the band was too big, and I had to put the drummer on the pool table. <laughs> the <band>. <laughs> Jeez, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, he performed one of the funniest gigs of his life in a, in a really, really happy go lucky way. And that's to me the proof of a good drummer. So fair play for still performing a smashing gig with a terrible <laughs> Look, Oh my God. I'd be so terrified that it would break. <laughs> Was it like a sturdy pool table? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for, own, for owning it. Yeah. yeah, it was just too big for us to move at the time. Now, we made alterations uh, at yeah. a later date, but back then I remember. And even <laughs> I interviewed him last March and he was like, do you remember that pool table? And I had completely forgotten that I put a drummer on top of a pool table. <laughs> that's, that's madness. <laughs> <laughs> that's <hilarious. laughs> yeah, it must play be. play a pool table. That'd be fun. Yeah, or a roof garden. I, I played a, with, on a roof garden with one of my older bands. It was the old Pint, the Pint in town. Back yeah. when it was the Pint. Yeah, we were on top of the roof and it was great. It was a tiny little place. <laughs> That's very like a, high up. You should just, yeah. yeah. It was tight. It was like a little patio kind of area. You could probably fit okay. like 20 people in there. It was great. Yeah. So, yeah. Now it's gone. That, that menu is so weird now because like downstairs, it's like a weird, like, it's got like a weird satanic vibe, and then upstairs is just a thing. <laughs> do they still do gigs there at the Wiley Fox? I don't know. I had a nice experience. Like the sound there was always savage. Like it wasn't mm. stage was really nice and deep. Um, but yeah, it was really weird. Like like you go into downstairs, they'd have like fucking like all these creepy dolls and uh, like tarot cards and all this shit. Like like behind the bar and then I think there was like a sign for like medium readings I don't know if it was happening but like whatever so I was like oh this is a really cool I don't know why I find that cool but I was like this is really cool. my kind of people <laughs> uh, but yeah no then you go upstairs and it's just like 
it's just this little venue. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with dance. It's like they hate each other. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Play, so. mm. I always got ID there as well. I got ID going in for a show. The bouncer was like, I can't let you in without ID. And I was like, why would I bring all this equipment <laughs> just to get <laughs> <Yeah>. fine? <laughs> yeah. Eventually, that yeah. Good. Mm. Yeah. I've never been there and I feel quite a sad because it sounds like such a wonderful place. And um, the chances of me getting ID'd would only just make my day better. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it was a it, it was a good venue. Back in yeah, the day. I'm just not sure if they do gigs there anymore. Yeah, I remember playing there loads um a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was, it was really stopped. busy. Once like during, once it changed like ownership and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's basically like if you go, it's just like after O'Connell Bridge on the left there somewhere. Um, yeah, it's down by what's uh that big tall building. The Sip Two one. Uh. The, the one that the homeless people sleep under. I think corner. that's the sixty one. No. Liberty Hall. Liberty Hall, yeah, there you go. Mm. Yeah. It's down by Liberty Hall. <laughs> <laughs> one time, <laughs> when I was like, uh, I think in second year, like, so like I'm, I'm from like Kildare. Um, so I, I like the countryside. Um, but Alex, I think it was either after a gig or something. And not that like I was real nervous around town, but like I'd be like hyper aware of my surroundings. And she was like, it's fine. Like, it's not that dangerous. She was like, just relax, like it's Ireland. And I was like, okay. And so like, we went for like a walk along the keys and she was like, see, see, it's totally fine. And then like, without like, she finished that sentence and a homeless guy had threw a cup of piss. <laughs> right, and like, it just went right by her head. And I was like, oh, and she's like, we have to go. We have to go right now. And I was like, I told you. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, ew. The city is dangerous. <laughs> town's interesting. Interesting place. Yeah, that's why everyone should live in the forest. <laughs> yeah. Don't get pissed thrown at you there. <laughs> Unless you do it yourself. <laughs> Since we're on the conversation of locals and how wonderful they are, I would love to hear what local music you would like to recommend that I should be listening to or that anyone else should be listening to. And let's try avoid cups and piss being thrown at us. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, hold on, I actually just listened to, I just have to fix my phone because I don't want to get her name wrong. I was listening to her last night. Um, I assume my screen's just gone blank now. And it really has. Mm. <laughs> it's all good. There's no such thing. <laughs> it's all part of the magic. Yeah, so I listened to, it's just like last night, like I obviously have like a few rock bands that uh, I absolutely want to shout out to it, but uh, so Eve Bell, like I, I just, <gasps> I ran the kind of her. She's super. She's amazing. Super fucking cool. Yeah. She did a live stream for us in Cypress Avenue in December and it's unbelievable. She's, her voice is just insane. Like, absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I listen, like, I've been, I've been kind of, I think maybe last May, um, I started getting into Erica Cody as well, but like, it was so weird. I saw her at, the Jesse J gig I didn't know who she was and I was like that was really cool cool girl and uh, it was cool music and then I kind of forgot like to look her up like afterwards uh because I think Jesse J drummer is just like he's fucking incredible so like my mind was <laughs> elsewhere after the gig I was just like that's how can you be that good <laughs> so yeah <clears throat> yeah so no idea yeah, then I like rediscovered her and I was like oh yeah she's, she's super cool um and yeah but uh I don't know if you've had them on but minus 10,000 hours as well they're Oh yeah, they're nice. great actually. They're, they're very good. Super nice. nice. Love those guys. Yeah. Weird music. Interesting music. Yeah, absolutely love it. I done session work with them back in college and I was like, this is so fucking cool. Um, and yeah, anytime I go to their gig, I'm like, this is so fucking cool. <laughs> like they're so super. And they're so loud as well. Like they actually hurt my I feel like an old man when I go to their shows and it's like, oh it's so loud. It's so <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. DJ's voice as well is just, it's, it, it's like he smokes like 800 cigarettes a day. I don't know how he does it. Hmm. Yeah, Dylan's uh, played with us a couple of times as well. Yeah, actually, yeah, they're, they're basically, well, like when me and Gav first joined, he was he was in myth as well. Um, uh, yeah, he was super nice to his office. I was like, 
I think I was like 17 or 18 and uh, I was really struggling with the songs and he was just like, just breathe. And I was like, okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lead weight. <laughs> Hmm. That's cool. Oh. I've always wanted to play in Cypress Avenue. Uh, I didn't know they were doing like live streams. That's super cool. Yeah, we did. I think the only gig I've done in Cork was in Fred Zeppelin's, like somewhere else. I can't remember the name. Oh, of yeah. It, but, mm. yeah. Fred's is it's a weird, but it's cool. But it's like it's fucking tiny. <laughs> it's so it's just a room and some guy's cafe. <laughs> yeah, I remember playing there with Alpha Day, and the sound it ju it's just it all bounces off everywhere and it's just like you're being mm. hounded from every direction yeah yeah it's great mm. <laughs> i yeah. love it mm. and me and uh, so the mm. promoter from uh xo we we went like so we were in a band called with him without um and he was on bass at that time so i think we got to the venue like early enough uh and there's like a there was like a door so it was like the, there was the jacks and then there was like a door to the side and we we're like what's this thing's behind there and we we're like i don't know <laughs> so then we went up and then we like we went up but like we ended up in the attic and like it was real dodgy like because it was just kind of like really shitty floorboards and we we're like we really shouldn't be up here and like then we we're like maybe we should turn around and like no, no let's keep going let's keep going and then we got up to the top and then it turns out there's like a security desk in the attic and the guy opened the door and he's like hey what the fuck are you and we're like ah! <laughs> yeah. just two random guys <laughs> Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that was really fun as well because I wasn't in I wasn't in, that band was super fun I wasn't in charge of anything I just had to show up and drum so it was just it was a bunch of crap <laughs> <laughs> yeah playing playing more kind of metally sort of stuff it's a whole different kind of vibe yeah yeah I think I always feel like like with our like with our own shows it's we just have to concentrate a lot. I don't yeah. know why. I don't think I don't our sounds are either. particularly complicated, but I think we have to get the mood very, very right. <laughs> yeah, I'm like so on edge. It's like always yeah. on knife edge. It's great. But like I remember playing like because I played with this band called Alpha Day. Uh and like I was playing bass, but like I didn't have to think about anything. I was mm. just kind of go on stage and just boo doo boo boo doo boo. You know, yeah. it'd be just grand. And then you just go, fuck yeah, and headbang and stuff. But the mid stuff, it's like Focus, focus, focus! Don't fuck this up! Oh my God, everything is so meticulous. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> it doesn't even seem like it. It just kind of is. No, like you listen to it, it's just like it's just like kind of alt rock. Like it's not fucking hard. <laughs> like a trained monkey to do it. I don't know why we why we get so on edge about it. Um, you love it that much. That's why. <laughs> you know, like, maybe. You know? Yeah, maybe. Because it's actually your baby. Like, if you weren't taking it so seriously, you're probably in the wrong type of band. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is obviously <laughs> yeah. where your probably, soul yeah. lies. That's beautiful. Yeah. And the fact that you're even questioning it is even more beautiful to me. Like, it's like, of course. <laughs> of course, this is special. This is your child. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was so it was so hard that, like, in, like, that period where, like, we kind of, like, took a break. I mean, Gav were, like, trying to write. I really, I did not think it was going to work at all. Like we'd leave the rehearsal studio, not like angry at each other, but just kind of defeated. We're just like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> we can't write together. This is, so this is bad. Mm. I don't know when it, when it changed at all. Uh, I want to say we had like a big rake at Cannes one night. It just it eventually clicked. I don't know how, um, but I think, I think it was the crow we wrote and then, we just mm. kept following that vibe and everyone seemed to kind of be happy with it. So like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think the band, that was just the general mood of the band at the time. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But obviously yeah. it's, it's quite the journey, like, cause you're talking 2013 break to now, like that's a long spanning mm. band, even with that considered, cause a lot of bands take breaks or do alterations or reform mm. or whatever. So that's impressive. One of the questions I've been trialing lately, we're going to try it here, right? Uh, a lot of people prefer a song from a band, right? But I'm interested in knowing in the band, what's actually your favorite song? Because like, it's very often completely different to what your highest performing song is or the fan favorite. So I find that fascinating. Um, um, I think my, my favorite is probably 145. Partially because I don't need to think about it so much. It's easy to play, so I can just relax a bit. And that 
rocking riff at the end, just it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. this is like such a the right thing for the song. It's like the energy, it's all correct and it's got a good ascent. And when you get there, it's like, yeah, this is the moment that the song needs. It's like very satisfying yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, that's super. I think I've I've two. So like for uh I I really, really like Stacy. The groove in it is uh it's really nice. Um it's nice and fat and it's not one of those ones where um usually like I kind of have to think a little bit ahead of like what I want to play like it like live like say studio I'll just like follow what people tell me to do and not <laughs> not ruin the song with like mental drums um but that one like I mean like you can just it's I don't have to think of what I want to do it just kind of comes off and it's nice uh I think it's just like a it's a nice song that one as well uh I think Hosier just released uh, Jackie and Wilson at that time, and me and Gav were like, maybe, maybe, like, because we were still trying to figure out like what like the sound was, and we we're like, mm. maybe we'll go with that. And then, then Gav came in to the studio with Stacy, and it, it's really nice until the bridge, uh, and he was like, and that's it. And I was like, cool. And I was like, so I get the end, and then we'll just crumple it. I think I was listening to uh, Alabama by John Coltrane, and the end of that song is. Uh, really really like spectacular and dark and I was like just put this at the end of that and I was like I think that's probably like a decent vibe that we can go for and it worked so I like that one is is nice and then I think the other I really like Ola as well not just because it was just released but like again don't have to concentrate a lot for that one when we do it live Gav yeah, solo opposite for me yeah like mm-hmm. your solos I think on on the uh record it's like maybe four minutes, but live, like that's the, like stretch. that stretch there to about like six or eight. Mm. And me and Gav, I think the last, like our last own show that we played was in the underground. Uh, and it like, uh, we left our bodies that night. Yeah, so, that was like, mental. Like, something had, something like, happened, uh, like, uh, like me and Gav clicked like really, really well. And like, and it was just a- uh, It's like we touched the magical doing solo, but just- yeah, like, so, yeah, we met up and we we're like, hey, <laughs> like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. We just we clicked really, really well, uh, and that's all. It was it was uh, like we we're just confident, but, like uh, off each other, and it was good. Yeah, it was really, just really that was like yeah. that was a m- mental moment. I remember coming out of that and just being like, whoa, yeah. what just happened? That was like, yeah. whoa, that was intense. Yeah. I, I like I assume that's what it's like die. <laughs> 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 I suppose we can only hope. But, yeah, so that was <laughs> it was it was spectacular. So uh, mm. yeah, it, it's definitely between those two. Uh, but on that that's only I generally don't like playing all the. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, yeah, I'd say all of probably my least favorite. It's hard to remember. <laughs> uh, but after after that show, like I was like, okay, I think I think that's like my new favorite. But before then, it probably would have been Stacy. Um, but yeah, yeah. Once we can keep going, like to like a spiritual plane. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Sure, it's over. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Ola. I like the end of Ola. Because mm. it means it's over. <laughs> 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 like it's a great song and I like the song, but yeah. it's just such a it's really hard like, task. We... It's like <laughs> here we go. Oh, I'm doing this huge big thing now. Yeah, um, when we wrote it, so like it just started off as the solo and it was real creepy yeah. and spooky. And I think I had just been getting into like really getting into jazz at that time. So like anything that was like a weird mode, I was like, yeah, I'll make that a song. And he would be like, please, no one's gonna listen to this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that just started as the solo and I, I loved it. Uh, and then we kind of had to develop it backwards <laughs> from, from there. Mm. Um, but it, it turned out it turned out really well, but like the first time that we played it in completion. So we used to have a place, like a, a studio rehearsal with, it was like, uh, hot records so we would just use their live room and then like the deal was like we would like lend them like they were a hip hop label uh, but they didn't have any equipment so we'd leave like our like uh, like back line there and then they could use it for like when they brought in like session musicians um, and we got like free rehearsals so like me and Gav would do really long days and we'd done a really long day to get like all it done and yeah we left and we were both just like completely fucking like dead and <laughs> I had to drive that was really dangerous 
But yeah. there is some Queens of the Stone Age song that came oh, on, and we both got God. like a migraine from it because oh, we were yeah. so tired. I can't remember the name of the song, but it was oh, so just... over. It's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, I remember that moment just being like, I can't take this anymore. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's so close to just getting the CD and just being like, ah. <laughs> yeah, like that was, that was an intense emotional experience. Yeah. yeah. I remember for yeah, so actually. That's, that's for... Why we don't like Ola. It's, uh, mm. I remember for the end of, uh, there's like the riff thing at the end of Ola. I remember we didn't have that. And I think we were recording it there in Hot Records that time. But yeah. so I was like doing guide tracks at home for the guitars. And uh, I was just playing along. And then I thought, ooh, I'll just stick a cool riff in at the end here. Cool. And then I just like left it in the guide track. So I think the first time that you heard it was probably in that guide yeah, track. Was like, oh, yeah. I it was really shit as well. Riff there. I, I was... Uh hung over to pieces that, that day in the studio. Uh, I, I'd been up, I can't remember what was on the night before, um, but I stayed up late with like my brother and his friends. And then I came into the studio for, I think 8 a.m. and I was I was in pieces. And then Gal showed me that. And I didn't want to question it. I think I was just like, oh, I guess this has been in the song. <laughs> it was just so, you know? <laughs> yeah. It was really unprofessional by me. <laughs> It was, wasn't the most professional by me either. I should have given you some warning. Yeah, yeah. but then, then we really, it didn't, those recordings kind of didn't really, uh, yeah, they were grand okay. for like, like I was kind of learning, but it wasn't really, I think the only one that's still up there from those sessions is Stacy. But like we had to get that like remastered and remixed. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we, when we redid Ola in Herbert Place, which is mm. now closed, is stupid Bad. but uh that was a good studio uh yeah that it, it became much it was it sounded the way we wanted it to like it was such like a milk toast version like when we first recorded it we were like ah it's not really it's not really there um but yeah yeah it was good yeah that, that studio was mm-hmm. nice it was they've moved oh. up to loud now yeah which it, the studio up there is it's so much nicer so, so you can if you if you're doing like a big project like you can do like an overnight so they have like bunk beds and shit that you can sleep in and uh, they also have like a nintendo 64 which mean gav oh, yeah. kind of like immediately we're like cool um, and they're <laughs> like so you guys gonna help pick up like um like practice like uh. <laughs> yeah i gotta shoot yeah. some hoops yeah 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 that yeah that studio herb place that was i remember we recorded there uh, brief there just all in the main room and it was all nicely yeah. lit and we were all kind of there yeah. playing playing together yeah the absolute vibe of that session <laughs> yeah and there's a nice piano apart from me i was just like watching i don't do anything on that song so i was just like from the control booth like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that was that was nice yeah mm. i like grief as well yeah i forgot about grief i like grief as well because yeah like our live sets like an hour and a bit so there's a nice break in between where me and gary get to go off and have cans like backstage. <laughs> it's good. Like, cause I, I don't drink before the show. My nerves won't let me. Um, uh, and yeah, so I can't. So, but like when grief is like there, uh, like it's it's a nice break, and it, it's kind of probably going all right by then. So I can kind of relax a bit and have have some cans. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of annoying for me. I have to bring more guitars to shows though. <laughs> Oh, poor you. I have to bring everything. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I accused the guitar I'm and I'm the guitar. It's, yeah. I, I got problems, okay? <laughs> you don't understand my problems. You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've talked about pretty much absolutely everything I could possibly think of for this interview, and I've really enjoyed the chat. Is there anything you would like to add to this before I stop recording, man? Um, I don't think we've, so. Maybe we have go, merch go coming. Yeah. yeah, we have nice merch on the way. Nice T-shirts. We got some sweet design. Yes. I don't know if yeah. they're all finished up and ready to go yet, but uh, I, I'd say it'll probably be five, a week or two. But yeah, no, there's a shit ton of new merch coming out. So yeah, we're gonna get T-shirts, hats, uh, wow. a few other bits like that. But yeah. well, I will be buying something. That's for definite. Because every week since March, I buy three items of Irish merch. Oh. oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah. Your wardrobe must be very full. Mm. Yes. You should like display them on a wall or something. That'd be nice. 
one day uh, I actually did a really cool thing uh when we did transmission music festival we did an online festival during the summer 10 hour live stream 18 bands I changed my t-shirt 37 times to feature as many Irish artists as possible <laughs> Holy shit. cool that's that's, that's great. great that's nice that's like a better like work rate than like Elton John <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I do little features called Captivities where I promote like whatever merch I've bought that week and try and get people interested in the band. So I'll definitely feature you guys and buy one off you. Um, the song Ola is incredible. The video came out Friday and the track itself came out the week before that on Spotify and all those wonderful streaming platforms. I would urge everyone to go check these guys out. There's just so much about to happen their way. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been lovely. Thanks, Thanks,